it was something that I was interested in, 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 in for a while. But when I started working on this, it was um, at the, uh, uh, at the very beginning of the, uh, uh, the war in uh, Iraq. And I was struck by how, in doing uh, uh, research for this, um, I discovered that Hollywood had really been mobilized during World War II. I mean, to a degree that, that you know, it, it's hard for us to imagine now. I mean, the, the government was very, very involved in the content of, of the movies and what would be shown and where it could be shown and so on. But that even after the war, when this new political situation arose, um, Hollywood filmmakers continued in some way to act as if they were mobilized. And maybe even more important, they actually thought that they were doing something important. They thought that they were, you know, that movies made a difference. And, today? and well, today I think that it's that there, there are individuals who, who make statements. And I think that that's something which really began sort of as this book ends in the mid 50s as a thaw. And, you know, individuals feel like they can make political statements. There's more of that in the, in the, in the 60s. But, but now, um, for the most part, you know, there are. Um, you know, for big movies, commercial considerations really uh, over, override things. I mean, it's fascinating to me that the most successful movie of our time or any time, uh, Avatar, should have such a, uh, a blatant um, anti-American or at least anti-Western, anti-imperialist viewpoint. Enjoy Grit TV? Want more people to see it? Well, we are making our program available free to public television stations coast to coast. If you would like to see our show on your local public television station, please give them a call and ask for Grit TV with Laura Flanders. Thanks.